Hey yo, what's going on everybody? My name's Derek, this is Fatal RPM, and I actually wanted to start this video off differently because on the last video, we got a comment from Blaster themselves and they hooked me up with something really interesting that I wanted to open here on camera. Ignore my extremely messy desk, but I'm extremely impatient and wanted to open this on camera, so that's why we're doing this right now. Oof, we got a bag. The person I was talking to said that they packed a lot of horsepower in here, which we all know each sticker adds five horsepower, so I can only imagine that we got quite a bit of stuff in here, but this is don't bust your knuckles, but <laughs> uh, you gotta love it. Well, I like the way this one feels. This one's just a blaster shirt, Rust Belt Warriors, <laughs> and it's cool. <laughs> so I said uh, something along the lines of I need uh, to add about a thousand horsepower, and we got this one's worth 10 horsepower. Uh, this one's another 10 horsepower. Uh, bust your knuckles, bust your nuts. Don't bust your knuckles, bust your nut. We got two of those, so that's 30 so far. Three of these, so we got 55 horsepower, I think. And these last ones say, my parts aren't rusty. This is the rust remover thing, so this is dope. This I'll definitely put at least one of these on toolbox back in the garage, but that's pretty dope. Oh shit, there's more in here. There's a couple magnets. Ah, it just keeps going. Hey, a cup koozie. What the hell is this thing? Oh, this is one for a beer bottle. That's super dope. And... Oh, a lot of rags. And I will make sure not to get them dirty and just leave them dirty forever. I will actually wash these. <laughs> this is really dope. I want to thank you for sending me all this stuff. But what I will say is that that's not what this video is about. And in that, actually, hold on one second. All right, so what I'm gonna be showing you guys today is prepping for a rebuild. So if you haven't seen the video, I'll go ahead and link it up there. But in the video before the last one, we went ahead, we pulled all the rods out, we pulled the crank out in the cradle. We went ahead, we saw we had a bit of damage to some of our bearings. So I wanna go ahead just for a piece of mine and double check all the clearances here or the tolerances on our bearings. We need a couple special tools which are all sitting back here that are needed for actual rebuilds. Now, this is a super basic guide on how to do this whole thing. Now, this is from a news perspective. I've done my research and you will wanna do yours if you're not working on the same car. And I'm, honestly, even if you are working on the same car, go ahead and get more information from other sources. Don't just use one. That is the best way to keep from making very costly mistakes. So in addition to checking the tolerances on the rods, we're also going to be checking some other measurements on the block itself. So, especially whenever you're doing a rebuild is you wanna check for roundness in pretty much any of the bores. That would be uh, for the crank cradle, the rods, the crank itself, as well as the bores, the cylinder bores on the engine. The reason why I say this is gonna be a super basic guide is because this is going off of a running engine. If you're doing a rebuild because, say, you overheated the engine and you blew a head gasket and you want to break it down and inspect to make sure everything's good, you're going to more than likely have a lot more work to do. But as far as what I'm doing, one of the things that was highly recommended, especially when building for power with some of these older engines, is to go ahead and get the deck flattened. I have reasons why I would and reasons why I wouldn't. One is because this is an NA engine. Back in the day, the compression ratios were basically the same between the NA and the turbo engines if they use the same block and heads. From factory, they run very small amounts of boost compared to what we run in today's modern cars. Since you're gonna be putting the engine under more stress, my train of thought is definitely make sure that everything is the way it should be. Now, I'm not gonna be doing that. <laughs> Worst case scenario, if it blows up, that's more content for you guys. Now some of the tools we're going to be using in this video are going to be this guy, which is the dial bore gauge. This is what we're going to use to go ahead and check the roundness of the cylinder bores, as well as the tolerances of the rods. Other things that you can or will need are going to be a outside micrometer. Outside micrometer is going to allow us to check the 
roundness and the tolerances of the journals but this is one thing you want to check and one thing we will be checking since we have that damage on what was that number five so this is going to be one of the most important things that we're going to need today and last but not least one other thing that you can use for building these engines that i was able to see was this little guy here this is an inside micrometer this is what you'll use to check the tolerances of those smaller bores like the bore for the connecting rod pins the first thing that we're going to measure is going to be the bores on the engine and the reason why that is is because this is going to be the easiest thing for me to record and then after that we'll go ahead measure the connecting rods uh the bores on the connecting rod as well as the cranks journals for the connecting rods but before we even do any of that we're going to go ahead and add 10 horsepower to the case over there So things got a little bit more complicated than I initially thought it was going to be. And let me show you why. So initially what I was planning on doing is I was going to do a full voiceover, you know, have all my numbers here on the sheet and everything. But these measurements were insanely out of, out of whack. So the worst one, which was five or not five, but four was the problem one here. And we were out of round by about. <laughs> four hundredths of a millimeter which is not within spec whatsoever it has to be within 0 0.01 or one hundredth of a millimeter and it was not that whatsoever so we are going to definitely want to take this engine to a machine shop but that doesn't mean that's the end of this because other than checking the cylinders being out of round the other thing that we're gonna to have to check is the journals here and making sure that these are all good and dandy. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean these up because I got a bit of dust sitting on them. So unfortunately, the bad news is we are going to have to take the engine to the shop because those cylinders are just a bit too out of round even though the measurements were technically inaccurate the differences between the measurements were accurate well the only ones that aren't within spec are four and six but four's big enough for it to be uh questionable so <laughs> essentially what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take it to the shop or to a machine shop to go ahead and have them correct the out of round cylinders also probably just uh, put a nice hone on the rest of the cylinders as well in addition to that uh, deck the heads so that we get a nice flat mating surface for it as well since we're going through all that anyway and the question that I was asking myself was if I was going to, going to have the heads flattened or not and I am honestly I should probably take the heads then as well it depends on what the price is but it would probably it would probably be smart to take the heads as well i'm still not sure if i'm going to put the 33 heads on the vg30 or if i'm going to keep those heads honestly if i'm going to have to 
have them decked. I should probably just go with 33, but that's also going to delay things by quite a bit because I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to a junkyard in the middle of winter. It's just not happening. So honestly, I'm probably just going to stick with those. We'll cam them as well and just kind of go from there. But, uh, so it's been a hot second. Uh, <laughs> there has been a lot that has gone on in the time since actually, uh, tearing down this engine and really inspecting what we have going on inside but what I can say is I finally have the stuff that we need to actually build this engine so let me sit you guys down and explain this. that is not a good spot there you go oh shit this is the highest I can go <laughs> we are at our brand new workbench with my heater here warming me I brought this from here on out so that you guys don't have to listen to that insanely loud garage heater whenever I'm sitting here doing things and I don't have to freeze while I'm actually recording things. So, what we have in these two boxes are the things that are going to make this engine work. And by work, I mean like actually work because I wouldn't have been able to put the engine together and actually run any type of power through it. So, this box, kind of obvious. So, we're gonna go ahead and skip past that for now because uh, I was a little thrifty with my shopping, I'm not gonna lie. So, in addition to what's in that box, I also got the things that are in here. And the things that are in here are dun, 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 dun. D32 rods and pistons. These are from the NA uh, variety which it's I mean it doesn't matter because I got this not for the pistons but for the rods and the reason why is because with what's in the other box oh wow I just slid it under there so easily I didn't even realize I did that ah. the beautiful 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 things are in this box here so here we have some wise co performance products and those products are forged Pistons! Uh, sorry, wristband. Uh, uh, there we go. <laughs> uh, so these are 88 mil or 87.5. Nope. Actually, these should be 88 mil. Uh, so these are 88 mil forged pistons, a compression ratio uh, for the Z32 of 10 to 1, which should be just shy of 9 to 1 with the head gasket that we're going to be running on the Z here. So you can see there's the specs for the stuff and the things, all the goodness. So the bore is 3.4449 inches or 87.5 millimeters. That's why I ordered 88. I don't know why it's 87 and a half, but yeah. So this is what we got here. They have, I was, so it didn't say, it said that it didn't come with this armor coating on the sleeves. Um, it said that it was $100 extra and I opted not to get it, but it looks like they gave it to me anyway. So this stuff did take a couple months to come in. These things are absolutely beautiful. Absolutely amazing. Uh, there is one other thing that I got and that is beep, this guy. This is needed for running the alternator. So this is going to be the pulley that goes on the alternator whenever we put that on the car because we're upgrading to the Titan and we need a four strap, four strap, uh, four, whatever the hell these are called, uh, <laughs> belt for that. And also this is like the most satisfying sound. Just listen. <laughs> Tell me that's not satisfying. All right. But yeah, that's pretty much all that we have here. We are going to be taking this guy here and the rods that I showed you earlier to the machine shop in the morning for me in a couple seconds for you. Uh, what we have to do first is we actually have to take the pistons off of the rods uh, because yeah, we're not using those pistons and I'd rather just hot tank those rods and not have to pay for another tank just in case everything doesn't fit in. So yeah, we gotta do that. 
And then once our workplace is set up, we have to grab our tools. Which is a Popeye chicken sandwich and Cajun fries entrance. clips out of here C clips and yeah we should be able to slide out that uh, that pin unfortunately the universe hates me hold on <laughs> no not this shit again mother fucker there is no way this is actually happening again Our snap ring here, but oh, dude, seriously? All right, so I finally got it on. That took me basically two and a half hours. I already know not to even waste my time trying to take this out with something that doesn't fit in there. Oh, that's gonna fucking pop off and hit me in the face. Let's not do that. Oh, okay. They're not super strong. I thought they were much stronger than that. All right, that came out. So I should, if I pick the right side, be able to, let's grab a hammer and a socket and see if that fixes my issue. 17 fits perfectly. Did it move? Hey, it moved, look at that. All right, metal part in it. Oh, it's free. Come on out. Come on out. Oh, it's almost free. Cool. It's not scarred up. Nope. And the bushing looks pretty good, actually. Not gonna lie. All right, cool. One and done. Oh shit, what direction? Ah, eh, no matter. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna worry about that. I'm just gonna have a whole bunch of fucking pistons on a stick from here on out. <laughs> All right, one and done. Let's continue on. Oh, I sent that one all the way through unintentionally. Number six! And unfortunately, our tower is complete, but without another wrist pin. That is kind of unfortunate, I'm not gonna lie. I'm just the slightest bit upset about that. Actually, hold on. Tap, 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 tap. That is very crooked. Holy shit. <laughs> mm, tap, tap. Boy, Shaka. Leaning tower of Z32. Pistons. Leaning tower of Zistens. Yeah, we'll call them Zistens. All right, neat. So, we are officially done. We have all six rods here, ready to be hot tanked and cleaned. And yeah, now all we gotta do is pull the cams out the uh, heads. Oh God, let me clean up. <laughs> Unlike the uh, do, do, do dickers, um, I actually care about everything that's installed in this, so, oh yeah, that's right, I forgot, I, un I undid the rockers. <laughs> I was just about to say, I don't want to break anything, so I can't really set this flat on the table, but I completely forgot that I, uh, I've unscrewed and removed these, so, yeah, we're good on this front, actually. Uh, so this might actually not be as bad as I thought it would be. One thing it looks like I probably am going to have to order is going to be some new seals for this. Cause I'm probably gonna destroy these things. How the hell this comes off, I have no idea. It wouldn't just, oh, wow. Okay, it would just. <laughs> uh, well, the back would just, not the front. Oh, there you go. Hold on, it's fighting. Me. Oh, I lost my lifters. <laughs> All right. Got three tens on the back here. That is the wrong direction. Man. All right, let's see, can I, yep, yep I can. 
cool beans. Wow, first one, let's go. All right, 19. Actually, feels a little too loose. We're gonna go for an 18. 18 just straight up does not fit on there. There you go. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and spin this around and work this guy out. We're gonna have to pull this seal out somehow. I'm gonna try. Nope, that ain't gonna work. Just so you know, I'm not putting any pressure on the cam. I'm just trying to slide this in here. And it keeps pushing the cam forward for some reason. I don't know why. I think I do have some self taps. I'm gonna send a screw in there. Into the seal, not into anything else. <laughs> Just the seal itself. Oh, it is not trying to go through that. Luckily, I got a whole box of these. There's always something that's going to fight you. Always something. I think these might be just a bit too big. Oh my god, no way. Okay. That worked, finally. So, I put the, it, I made a little space here, unintentionally. I just put the pry bar in there and started banging it off the side of the table. I dinged up my table, ah, a little bit. There's oil coming out of this now. Now, we should be able to just pull this guy out. So I'm thinking I might get some new cams as well. Not entirely sure, I might honestly hold off on that part. All right, cool. All right, head one done. Wow, this thing is significantly lighter without those in there, weirdly enough. Like these things. The second I get those things back, the cams are going back in. So I'm just gonna put all these things together. No, I don't wanna risk it. I'll clean that off myself. Okay. All right, screw is pointless. We know this now. We're going into this with actual experience of pulling these things off now. There you go. Ah, shit. I lost the same amount this time. This I will put on my own. Alright. One, two, three. Grab. You. Seriously. Seriously. Don't, don't be like that. Thank you. All right, finally got it out. So look, this is, this is what I was saying. Spring's all broken up and the metal was legitimately tearing up. So, I don't know, I don't care. This is out, that's all that matters. All right, so now all we gotta do is clean up, which is super simple. All right, so now that that issue is completely finished it's time to actually go ahead oh god get these things into the trunk of the car so that we can also take this block and get it to the machine shop so let's go ahead and do that oh yeah i just have to take this off the block as well uh honestly that's about it once I get the block off, I'll be able to get this back plate off. Uh, can we sand, sand? No, we can't sand the block up on the front. So I'm gonna sit the block on the table and pull this plate off after I get the plate off because we're also gonna get this plate clean because that's gonna be a lot of work just to clean it up itself. So let's go ahead, get the block off the stand and we should be good. It's heavy, but it's not too terribly heavy. The issue is that all the edges are sharp, so my hands are killing me right now. Five! Thank you. 
I would just like to point out that the fact that I picked that up twice for the video shows my dedication. Hit the like button. Ow. Now comes time for the road trip. Many months later. Okay, so I actually didn't record an outro for this because I expected my engine block to actually be ready a lot sooner than it was. However, I did want to let you guys know that there is going to be more content coming relatively soon. And I also want to thank you for sticking around with the channel because it's been quite a hot second since we've uploaded any content here. But from the bottom of my heart, I really do want to thank you for sticking around. And as always, if you like the video, please do drop it a like. We have some really good content coming here pretty soon and we are ramping up progress on the Z. But we have some other things hiding in the background here that I don't want to show you that I feel like is going to put Fatal RPM on the map. So if you like the video, please do drop a like down below. And if you want to and haven't already, please do hit the subscribe button as well as the bell icon so you know when I drop these videos. But as always, thank you again for watching. Peace out. And I'll see you in the next one.